um, I'd go into the office to go to work and, you know, I'd go past these little warehouses and things and, you know, they'd always come up for police and I'd daydream about them. I'd get a lease on one of them and, you know, start my own little, you know, graphic design slash visual arts, you know, premises. And I always dreamed about it and, you know, the day that my whole team was taken into the boardroom and told that we were going to get made redundant, like, pretty much everyone else cried and I kind of was it sh like shocked at first but then it's kind of like yes yes like you know it, it was just gonna kick out the door I needed it like it's really hard to um I guess take that jump by yourself but if someone pushes you you're like okay well you know someone threw me off the the diving board now I'm just gonna go with it like you can't stop yourself can you When I was growing up in the country, I um, used to have, I used to have always had these nightmares about the city just coming closer and closer and building up and like, I could actually see the lights from the city that was nearest. Like every night you'd just sort of go outside and there'd be a new light closer from a new house that's being built or a new building or something. And we're on this flat plain. And so I used to dream about, um, I guess have nightmares about, you know, it, the bordering, the, you know, skyscrapers and that bordering around our farmhouse and the paddocks weren't going to be there anymore. And, um, I just, I don't know, I find the city, there's so many parts to it that are depressing and dark and cold and, um, like, you can't see the sky sometimes because, you know, yeah. I guess, like, my my mum was had the same fears and that as well and she passed away when I was 17 um, and those same fears that she had I've got as well it's like she never flew I've flown on a plane once to Melbourne and that was like huge and it's that claustrophobic feeling um, and it, I guess in a way it, Every time I make a work that's sort of got that city country contrast, you know, it reminds me of her as well. And then it also reminds me of these fears I had as a as a child. I'm, I'm definitely an artist who deals with the, the past. I'm not an artist who makes work about the future. One of my main influences, especially for my drawing style, is the old line and hatch style that um, I used to use a lot for illustrations in old books. So this kind of one, this is um, Alice in Wonderland. But ones like this, um, the annual book for girls, and they had crosswords and stuff in them and she filled them out. So yeah, it's like having um, bits and pieces from my mum for when, you know, she was a child. It's really cool when you sort of flick through and you find a page and she's, you know, scribbled by love, you know, whoever's initials it was. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, it's really cool to have. I didn't know I didn't know my mum as a creative person. She would play, you know, piano and stuff, but when I'd come home from school she was normally crying, playing the piano or listening to old reel to reels of her parents playing the piano on their harmonica and her side of the family was really creative um, but I'd come home from school and I like, should be playing these bawling her eyes out or playing the piano bawling her eyes out um, but she always encouraged me to follow my creative path if like anything I wanted to do she like she enrolled me in a drum lessons when I was 11 she um I had this fascination with the cello for a while. She, you know, booked me into cello classes. Somehow, you know, she convinced my dad to go out and buy me a, a big, big ass drum kit and stuff when I was fifteen. And um, it's something that I, I guess, I keep with me that I know she'd be happier with what I'm. I'm doing now, like following what I wanted to do because I know it's probably she regrets that she didn't 
follow her creative path. So I'm, I always, I'm not going to let anything, you know, stop me from doing what I want to do. I think you got to be personal in your artwork. Like that's how I express myself, you know. Um, after my mum died, I didn't go to counselling. I, I found it hard to talk to anyone and it's actually probably only the last couple of years now that I actually can talk to my friends openly about it and you know I'm almost 31 now and this happened to me when I was 17 and the way that I dealt with it was making artwork because you know I felt writing words about it or, or saying out, out loud or anything it was it didn't express my emotions, I guess, properly, but being able to draw a picture about it. Or it's, I guess it's not so much about the, the death part either, it's about remembering who my mum was and, and those feelings that I knew she had, which was claustrophobia and, you know, the country and the city and, you know, that, that expansion of the city trying to eat the country in a way and these were huge fears that she had and I guess in a way I'm trying to tell her story in my artworks. <laughs>